Amen. Nobody. You know what, what scripture I think about when I hear that? In the book of John chapter number 6, disciples, some of the, some of the, the, the people left Jesus. And, and Jesus looked at the 12 and said, are you going to go too? And they said, where are we going? Look at your neighbor and say, where are we going? No one greater than you. Peter said, we have come to believe and to know that you are the Christ, the son of the James, where I'm going? How you going to lead this? Like one day my wife talking about, I'm thinking about, where you going? How you going? How you going to lead? He said, Pastor, what you do? I start packing with her. Then the kid asked me, he said, Daddy, where we going? I don't know. Ask your mama. You think you're going to leave me? The devil is a... Uh... Praise the Lord. All right, Mark chapter number 11. Mark chapter number 11. No one greater. No one greater. Family, we got special guests. We got Miss D in the house. Miss D, raise your hand. That's Monica Friend right there. Come on, Miss D is in the house. Amen, amen, amen. Hope you enjoy the service, woman of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Mark chapter number 11. So we know the D stand for something. Amen. Amen. You know, in, in the hood, they don't call you a lot of time by your name. It was in the church that tell people, no, my name ain't T, my name Terry. <laughs> you don't see no niches in the Bible. See, if, if the prophet were there, they said, man, that's prophet E right there. That's Elijah the prophet. They'd be calling G. They go to Big J. No, 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 no. God, the Bible said God know you by your name. Pray the Lord. All right, Mark chapter number 11. Mark chapter number 11. Streaming live once again, so glad to have you with us. Amen. There's no distance in the spirit. I fear you. Amen. All right, let's do our smile next side. Turn to the person to your left, to your right. Show them your 22s. Your 32s, your 22s, your 12s, your 2s, whatever you have left to work with, everybody in the house ought to be smiling. Let's hold our Bibles up and let's do our confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. Come on, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am, I am. What, it I am. what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have, I can have. What, it I can have. what it says I can have. I am a believer, am a believer. And, not a and not a doubter. I am a doer. Not just, Not just a hero. I believe the word, believe the word. From, Genesis from Genesis through Revelation. Through Revelation. So let God, let God be true. Every man, Every man. A, woman, a woman, a liar, a liar. in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. <clears throat> so in Mark eleven twenty two, 22, so Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, or have the faith of God, or the God kind of faith. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things that he said will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever thing you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So we're talking about the confession process. We're talking about the confession component of the faith process. The Bible said you're going to have what you say. Say I'm going to have what I say. We said that we're talking about faith. We're talking about faith as a spiritual principle that taps into the creative power of God made available uh, through man, whereby man can transform his conditions, his circumstances and situation in natural realm, which has been given authority over. We start talking about the process. Somebody say the process. We said for every promise, for every principle, for every prophecy, vision, word, there's a faith process to bring it to pass. We're talking about the, the, the faith component of the faith process. <clears throat> we said our objective for this lesson, we said a faith confession is a statement that I choose to make, a faith uh, confession is a statement that I choose to make that is in agreement with the word of God, regardless of the situation, and regardless of how it looked, and regardless of the circumstances. We said I choose by an act of my will to say what God's word said, and I am not in denial of the facts about my situation, but I still to say, I choose to say what God's word said. So no matter what it said, I'm not in denial. I know what the facts say. And we said, go to Mark 426. Go to Mark 426. I choose by an act of my will to say what God's word said. 
I'm not a denier. I know my facts about the situation, but I still choose to say what God's word said because I know that God can not lie. I know that it's impossible for God to lie. Somebody say impossible. So we start talking about the faith process. God is a God of order. Somebody say order. God is a God of order. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40, God said, I do all things decently and in what, family? In order. So the faith process, we said last week, it's not magical. The manifestation is a progressive spiritual process and a progressive natural process. We don't have to know how the manifestation is going to happen. You don't have to know. You don't have to streak it down. You know, that's, that's women back in E-Day back in, and, and back in, in, in today. Somebody say today. There's women who have having baby who are mentally challenged, having babies. They don't have a clue how the process works. You don't have to know how God going to bring it to pass. That's not your job. So watch this here, family. Watch this here. In Mark chapter number 4, verse 26, Mark 4, 26. I want for you to get there. In Mark 4, two, you can start off in faith not knowing how the manifestation is going to come to pass. We leave the door open for whatever God want to do. So in Mark 4, 26, if you're there, say amen. amen. He said, the kingdom of God is as a man shall scatter or plant seeds on or in the ground. And he shall sleep by what, family? He shall sleep by what? And rise by what? The seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know what? For the earth yield crops all by itself. First the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain's ripen, what's the next word say? Immediately. Now, I'm going to show you something God taught me years ago. Somebody say years ago. Now, he said, this is how the kingdom operates. As a man should gather, gather seeds into the ground. He should sleep by night and rise by day. He said, the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. So what God showed me, showed me, when you look in verse number 28, look in verse number 28. He said, first the blade. Then the head, and after that, watch this, the full grain in the head. God told me, he said, Terry, everybody look at me. God taught me process. So I've been, I've been saying for year, I've been saying for year, first, then, after, when, immediately. You see the process? God said, he said, first, somebody say first. Then, <coughs> after, when, immediately. He said, all you got to do is first, he said, he said first the blame. See, all you got to do, we got to see, I want for us to start saying that. First, see, see, let me, let me get down my paper here. First, watch this here, first after win immediately. He says, a lot of time we see stuff in people's life, we said, man, you got to break through suddenly, immediately. Oh, baby, that was the first, first to blade, the first, then, win, after, then immediately. You see the process? But a lot of time when we see stuff, we think that it's, it's immediately. We think that it's suddenly. Uh-uh. He said right here in my Bible, he, I've been, it's been underlined for years. He said, watch this here, family. First, then, after, when, immediately. I like what the New Living Translation said. The New Living Translation said this way. First, then, after, what, I, said, I said, first, then, after, finally, suddenly. See, so when you see a sudden in somebody, like, God is a God of process. He said, if you do this first, and after you do that first, then you're going to have a then. And after you have a then, you're going to have an after. After you have an after, he said, you're going to have an immediately. And that word immediately, watch what the word immediately means. The word immediately means now. Somebody say now. The word immediately mean right away. The word immediately mean instantly. I like this word here because this it's vernacular is what we say today. The word after you do first, then, after, finally, you're going to have a bang. And then the word suddenly mean prompt or sometimes God used the word straightway. God is a God of order. He said first the blade, then you're going to have a first. Then you're going to have a then, you're going to have an after, and you're going to have a when. 
and then going to come uh, immediately. Somebody say immediately. Amen, 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 amen. And then we say God can operate by miracles. But miracles, when the miraculous take place, it's an intervention of God where God suspends the natural law to bring his will to pass. We cannot predict miracles. We don't know when a miracle is when God decides to do something. But family, you can take the, the, the faith process and produce anything you want out the scripture. Are you with me? Remember I told you miracles are really for unbelievers. Let the church say amen. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Now, and we said that the plan of God is for us to increase little by little. Somebody say little by little. The plan of God for us to increase little by little. Now watch this here, family. Watch this here. We said that if you're not in competition, you can be patient in the process. But if you are in competition, you're going to get frustrated because the pressure going to be on you. You always, see, when you tell somebody something, you're always going to be trying to prove to them that it's going to come to pass. Amen. You don't have, but when you believe the process and you believe God, let me tell you something, it relieves you of any pressure because the pressure really is on God. Because the only thing I'm doing is what God, now if, if you're doing something God ain't told you to do, the pressure on you. But if you're doing something and God told you to do it, it must, it shall come to pass. Say amen. 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 So, say I'm not in competition. I ain't in competition with you. Now watch this here, family. We start talking about the serious commitment to the process. We said that you must make a serious commitment to the process, then you won't have any pressure on you. You will be settled in the process, and you can let the process work and enjoy the ride. Now, I want to talk about the devil. Yeah, I'm going to expose the devil. I'm going to expose him right now. Now, watch this here, family. We said that the devil, the devil was challenged the faith process. Watch this here. We're not ignorant of the devil devices. The devil don't have any new tricks, family. Somebody say no new tricks. No. So the Bible said we're not ignorant of his device. He's going to challenge the process. He's going to tell you just like I think about Elizabeth. Elizabeth was pregnant. But watch this, family. But for six months, some of the uh, 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 commentaries said Elizabeth didn't know whether or not John the Baptist was still alive. Because he wasn't moving. Just like when a mother carrying a baby, you like to see your baby kick every now and then. So she, the Bible said when Mary came in and John jumped in Elizabeth, Elizabeth said, oh, he's still alive. The devil are challenged, he's going to challenge the faith process. Why? Because he wants you to believe that it's not working. See, just like when you put a seed in the ground, you know that seed is working. The devil going to challenge the process. The devil comes to challenge Every righteous resolve. The devil will challenge you in the every faith process in the area of your believing and you have been confidence in the process. The Bible said we fight the good fight of faith. When believing God and operating in faith, you're going to have to fight with the devil. Now, go to the next slide, Andrew. Watch this here. Watch this here. The devil, he's going to fight you in your thought life. See, because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so see, see, if, if, your, if whatever you think, you're going to speak. Amen. See, whatever you think, <clears throat> that's why the word of God told us to cast down all imaginations that exalt itself against the word of God and bring in a disobedient into being the word of God. He going he gonna to let you, he going to tell you, it ain't working. Family, look at here, look at here. Let me show you the process. God told Abraham at 75 years old that him and Sarah are going to have a baby. How long did it take? 25 years. Can you imagine what Abraham had to fight off? See, look at the process. And now he's, he's a, now he's 99 years old, and God said next year by this time, Sarah's going to have a baby. Abraham said, hold on, hold on, hold on, God. I'm 99 years old. Sarah is, is 89. The woman going to be, she already reek at 89. How's she going to have a baby? And God, I ain't fired something, it, it, I ain't fired something in many years myself. Watch this here, family. Watch this here. Watch this here. Same thing with Joseph. God told Joseph his family going to bow down to him. It took 13 years. But let me tell you something. Somebody need to get this today. Listen. See, you think what you, you, you think only thing is working what you can see. 
Watch this here, Victor. What you can't see, God is working in an unseen realm. What you can't see, like that seed is working on the ground. Let me tell you something. If you plant that seed in the ground and put dirt over it and put water on it and get it sun, you can talk all you want to. That thing going to work its process and produce them tomatoes. I'm telling you there's something working in the unseen realm that you can't see. And the devil going to challenge the thought process. He going to tell you everything that it ain't working. See, and we can do that with everybody. David, when God spoke to him as a teenager, that he's going to be the next king. We can do it with Moses. The Bible said when Moses was a baby, his parents knew that he was an unusual child. So the Bible said they hid him as long as they could for three months. Then she put him in a basket in the ark and put him in the river. Then the Bible said 40 years old, it came into Moses' heart to deliver the children of Israel. But the Bible said he killed the man in his own strength. Then Pharaoh chased him off into the wilderness. Now watch this here. How long was Moses in the wilderness? For 40 years. Moses thought it was over with. But guess what was happening, Kim? The process was working. Look at your neighbor and say, it's working. Somebody need to hear that. I'm telling you right now, what you believe in God for is working. I feel like singing my song. I feel like, I, I feel like singing my song. Y'all want that thing? Okay, <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Amen. Watch it. Hey, 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 come on. Y'all, William Murphy, y'all know a thing. It's working. Amen. Somebody say it's working. Somebody say he's leaning. In my, in my direction. Family, the devil going to challenge your, the process of your thinking. He going to tell you, it ain't working. Yes, it is. Well, look what it says. It says, the devil will try to talk you out of your faith. The devil wants you to waver. What the scripture said in Galatians 6, 9, don't be weary and well doing. You going to reap if you, see, you got God on your side and you got the devil, but you in the middle. And both of them are telling you something. Either you're going to believe the truth or you're going to believe a lie. See, and watch this. He's going to challenge you. Everything takes place in the, Bible, in the mind. The Bible says we serve God with our mind. The Bible says as a man thinketh, so is he. The Bible says we have the, the, if we got the mind of Christ, then what's the problem? Watch this here. The devil wants you to become intimidated by other people in the length of time that it takes to come to pass. People come to you and say, I, I, I thought you told me you're going to get a house. I am going to get one. People tell you, I thought you gonna, I thought you going to start a business. I thought you was going to get married. I thought you was going to pay your bills off. I, <coughs> you look them right in the face and say, it's still going to come to pass. Cause folks try to, don't let folks intimidate you. Man of God told me years ago, said they ain't going to help you in that way. Amen. If God don't help you, you ain't going to make it anyway. So folks always try to intimidate you. I, you've been saying for years. Amen. Abraham said it for years. Amen. Joseph said it for years. Moses said it for years. David said it for years. Then Pastor Terry can say it for years. And it's still going to come to pass, baby. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you better ask somebody. I know, I know they over there sneaking, high devil. Look, he's still talking that stuff. Yeah, I'm talking that stuff. I'm saying what God said. God says mine. Amen. God, don't you call yourself Abram no more. I call you Abraham. You the father of many nations. You the father of multitude. Don't call that girl Sarah no more. Call her Sarah. David walking around talking about he king begging folk. But many years later, he became king. See, the devil, the devil going to fight you. Watch this. The devil wants you to become discouraged and stop confessing and toning it down. Sir, see, when God first tell you, you bold with it. Down about eight years later, you come out, yeah, God told me, yeah, yeah, you know, I still believe God. No, baby, put that bass back in your voice and say, God said it, it's still the truth. Because every now and then folks try to push up on you. Pastor, I thought you told me. Yeah, I told you. I told you what God told me, and I'm fully persuaded that what he told me is going to come to pay. Go to my next slide, Andy, before I go off on the devil up in here. <laughs> Amen. Somebody said, don't waver. Don't waver. 
go to Hebrews chapter number 10. You can't waver. You're going to reap in due season if you, if you faint not. Don't give up when you are challenged. You're supposed to be challenged. See, that's, that's, see, see, that's, what the, that's the problem with the church, Katrina. They think we're on a cruise ship. No, baby, you're on a battleship. <laughs> See, that's the problem with the church. They get, soon they get born again, they get, oh, they think, yeah, watch this, enjoy, everything going to be all right. No, baby, all hell going to break loose in your life. Because the devil, gonna want, he wants you to, to take that Jesus and, and throw him away. Uh, you hold on to your Jesus. You, no, let it Let it run. You hold on to it. Don't you get rid of this. You get rid of everything else, but you hold on. Tell your neighbor, say, hold on. You better hold on. Amen. So watch this here. Watch this. Don't give up when you're challenged. You're supposed to be, because it's a faith fight. But a, what's a faith fight? A faith fight, watch this, James, is a fight we win. I already know what the end going to look like. Let me tell you something, family. I watch, sometimes I watch fights, and the guy who won, he just blood is the challenge. But he got his hands up. I guarantee you, when I walk up out of there, baby, I got the belt. You better ask somebody. Watch this here, family. See, now watch this here. Let's, let's look at the scripture. Uh, Hebrews chapter number what? 10, verse 23. Hebrews 10, 23. Uh-uh. No, don't give up when you're challenged. You're supposed to be challenged. In fact, when God give you a word, remember, the, I taught you in the book of Matthew, chapter number 13, Mark chapter number 4, and Luke chapter number 8, the Bible says, immediately the enemy comes to steal the word from you. Because he knows if he don't get that word from you, it's going to produce. It's going to produce. So he's going to do everything he can. He's going to throw the kitchen sink at you, the dirty water, the dishes, everything. You stand right there and say what God said. Family, this is a true story, Jane. I'm still as bold as I am today as I was 20 some years ago. I'm fully persuaded that what God promised this boy is going to come to pass. Amen. And I can see him now to my pastor. You tell him, mm-hmm. Get over there and have a seat. <laughs> Hebrews chapter number what? Don't be intimidated by people. Amen. Man, I heard a man of God say the other day, he said, the only, he said, if you want to be like, get a dog. If you're going to believe God, folk going to challenge you. Amen. A dog don't care who he like. He just, whoever feeding him, that's who his friend is. If you want a friend, go get your dog. Hebrews 10, 23, did that say amen? Let us hold fast to the confession of our what? Let us hold fast, it's the word, really the word hope, not faith. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. It's faithful, baby. Hold fast to your confession of hope without wavering. Don't tone it down. You go in the barber shop, you go in the house alone. Hey, hey, Mary, tell them what God's going to do for you. You say, hold on one second. <laughs> God said one day I'm going to run the company. Because they, 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 they build it in the, in the barbershop. Tell them, Pastor Terry, tell them what God said. God said one day I'm going to own this city. Yeah. Sit down. Finish cutting my hair. See, I know they've been saying, it sounds crazy. That's how you know it's God, Samantha, because it's crazy. It sounds crazy. Verse 35. Hebrews 10, 35. Therefore, don't cast away your... Come on. Don't, therefore, don't cast away your... Confidence and faith in the same word, which has great what family? For you have need of, you have need of endurance, patience, persevering. There the word go. After you have done the will of God, you may, you shall receive the what? You shall receive the promise. Don't tone it down. Amen. Watch this here. Watch this here, family. When the circumstances around you don't line with what you're saying, you still got to say what God said. You got to be disciplined to walk by and not by. Amen, amen, amen. John chapter number six. John chapter number six. Let's get down. Amen. Don't be intimidated. Amen. Say what God said. And most folks, you teach this. I've been teaching for years. And they still saying what the devil's saying. They still quoting their facts. They still saying, I'll be broke all my life. They still saying, you know what I'm saying, me and this man, they gonna never be able to get along. They still saying, this, this, this boy is crazy than the best of boo. 
What's a vestibule? <laughs> they still saying, they, you, 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 all you got to do is listen to them. Say, you know what I'm saying? Nobody ever want me. Nobody, you just listen to their word. They're still saying, you have to say what God said. Why? Because God cannot lie. It's impossible. So if you say what God said, you put the truth out there. Quit telling me the facts about your situation. Now watch this here, family. Let's get into the confession. Let's get into the confession now. Watch here. Now, understanding the power of the spoken words. Here it go. Words are containers of spirit life. Words are containers of spirit life. As a spirit being, when you speak, you make things happen in the spirit realm. You set things in motion. See, most of us think that we're natural. Uh, when this Bible said, and in fact, I'm, I'm going to take you to the scripture. The Bible said, the Bible said we are spirit beings. See, most of y'all think you are flesh and blood. You have to have flesh and blood for the spirit lives on inside of you. When the spirit leaves and the soul leaves, this flesh is going to go right back to the earth from which it came. But you are a spirit being. Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So as a spirit being, when you speak, you make things happen in the spirit realm, the unseen realm. Think, <clears throat> I'm going to back it up with scripture. Every, something that's happening, whether you, can see, whether you can see it or not. That's why he said we got to walk by faith and not by sight. We got to walk by what God said, not by how I feel. You got to know, see, you got to start seeing yourself as a spirit being. Okay, let's confirm that. See, I see myself as a spirit being. See, Genesis chapter 1. Come on, let's back it up with scripture. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Come on. So I know when I say something, I don't just say something. That's what the Bible says be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Because I know when I open my mouth, things are happening. I know it. Things are happening. Some, let me tell you something, family. Whatever you say is headed your way. Amen. You have, how many of y'all heard what I just said? Whatever you say, come here, Victor. Let me show you something. Come here, Victor. Okay, okay. Stop right there. See there? See there? Look at, look at, he was headed my, and then I stopped him. Why? Because I, I stopped him because I, I started saying something opposite. You can go back now, Victor. No, one second. No, Victor, come, see. See, go on back. See there? I know. You can go on back, Vic. Thank you, Victor. See, I know as soon as I said something, he started coming my way. Something is headed your way. You better get on your knees and pray that it ain't something that's going to destroy you. That's why he told me, look what he told me, Miss Anna. He said, Terry, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Now, Victor, come here for real this time. Come here, come here, Victor. Watch this here. So he said, goodness and mercy is following me all the days of my life. Victor, everywhere I go, I want you to follow me. See, I know some is following me all, all, all the days of my, but that word goodness and mercy, now I'm going I'm to be goodness and mercy. I'm going to follow you, Victor. The Bible said it's really hunting you down. It's pursuing you to overtake you. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like like like, yeah, he liked that. <laughs> That's really what it's doing. See, family, let me tell you something. Soon as you open, see, the Bible said, remember I just did it? As it is in the natural, I taught you, so it is in the Lamar. As soon as I open my mouth, Victor started coming to me. As soon as you open your mouth, something headed your way. And then you said, I, 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 I knew you was going to drop out of high school. Yeah, because you told me 12 years ago. I, I, I knew you were going to get pregnant out of where a lot. Yeah, because you told me I was, uh, I was a no good some, some, some. I, I, I knew I, we were going to lose the house. Yeah, because you told me that we can't never keep nothing. You hear what I just said? You stand up, see, I, it's headed your way, and it's going to overtake you. And then you say, I, I, you know, I, can, I, I, I know I can never keep a man. That's, that's why this, this, the, the one that you're right now, like Jesus said, that's your fifth husband. <laughs> the one you, like Jesus said, the one you're with right now is not even your husband. See, don't nobody want me. That's why you by yourself. <laughs> See, because you putting your words out there. And when you put your words out there, some start happening. Start coming your way. I see people right now. I, I know some people right now. I had a friend of mine. Uh, uh, 
you remember Scott in Arizona? He told me, he said, man, I'm on, I, nobody in my family live a long life. Now, this was, a, this was a Jewish person who was a millionaire. He committed suicide. See, his, his father, they died from, what disease? Prostate, prostate, prostate cancer. He didn't even, his, his, his father and brother died from prostate cancer. He didn't even let it get to him. He took his own life. And it wasn't about, he, he wasn't even sick. Family, it works whether you know it or not. Some is headed your way, and you, that's why I said, Father, I can't say anything where I ever spoke in my life. It won't overtake me. The devil is a lie. Look at your name and say, the devil is a lie. Good as in mercy. In fact, I just slowed down. Y'all better just take, overtake me. <laughs> I, I used to be in a hurry lie. I used to walk like that in New York. And now, I, I, <clears throat> I'm taking my time with this thing. Because I know God taught me, and I'm going to teach you right now. When I open my mouth, things are happening. Look at here in verse 26. If you're there, say man. Then God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Somebody said, that's me. Everybody look at me, family. That's you. Say, that's me. That's me. Don't folk hesitate. Don't hesitate. That's me. Let us make man in our image and our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds, the cattle, the earth, and every creeping thing. God even gave us power over creeps and things that creeps on the earth. Amen. You got power over creeps. So God created man in his own image and his own what? Okay, now, okay, I'm going to jump around for a minute. Holy Spirit, where can I go? Okay, right here. Go to, keep your finger right there because we're coming right back. Keep it right back. See, some of y'all don't have ribbons like I do. Some of y'all got them old cheap Bible. So, but go to, get you a good Bible. Go to, uh, some of y'all got them postcards up in there. Where are we going, Holy Spirit? Go to John chapter 4. John 4, 23. We're coming right back. I know when I open my mouth, something happened. Amen. I, I value my words. John 4, 23. Watch this here, family. As a spirit being, when you speak, Things are happening. You ready? Verse 23, you there say, man, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and what? For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Look at verse 24. God is what? God is what? And those who worship him must worship him in what? So go back to verse 27. So God created man in his own image and likeness. We just read what God is or what? Spirit. So God created us in his own image and likeness. So God created us what first, mama? Spirit being. He created us in his, God ain't no, God don't have no flesh and blood. That's why when you come to earth, it's illegal for you to be in the earth without a body. That's why the Bible said the devil is, wrong, is roaming around, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. You to be in the earth realm is illegal. That's why the spirit, when they go out of people, they looking for somebody. They looking for somebody to open the door with their word so they can step right in there. Step right in there and be demon possessed. Demon influenced. So God created man in his image and likeness. In the image of, of God, he created them. Male and what? Yeah. And then God blessed them. And God said, everybody look at me. How did God bless them? The next verse tells you, and God said, you bless folks with words because you're going to have what you say. He blessed you. Somebody said from the beginning. From the beginning. And then God blessed them and said, be fruitful, be multiplied, fill the earth, subdue it, and have what? Dominion, Dominion over it. Look at 2-7. Look at 2-7. Now we are spirit being. Now he give us our earth he gave us an earth soup. Verse 7, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his life and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a family. You got to know when you open your mouth, things are happening. John chapter number 6. Go to my next slide, Andy. Come on. Go to my next slide. John chapter number 6. Jesus said that the words that we speak, they are spirit and they are life. Your words are how you transact business in the spirit realm. Your words have power. Somebody say power. power. I know when I say something, baby, things are changing. Things are happening.
could only say what he tell me to say. John chapter number six. I know I'm a spirit bring. Okay, okay, okay. John chapter number what? I'm trying to see whether or not the Holy Spirit wants me to go there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. John chapter number six. We'll do it for the first time. Okay, keep your finger right there and go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number five, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter number what? Table of contents for some of y'all. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians. Come on, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse 23. I'm going to confirm it one more time. Okay, I'm okay. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. If you're there, say amen. amen. Now may the God of peace, he's a God of what? Peace. Himself sanctify you completely. May your whole what? Spirit, your whole soul, and your whole body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord what? Jesus Christ. Go to Hebrews chapter number 13. I'm going to lock this in for you. You more than flesh and blood. Your flesh going to go to the earth between 7 and 120 years. And in your flesh dwells no good thing. Amen. So some of y'all sitting right next to a no good thing. Look at Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number 9. Hebrews 12, 9. Amen. Even Paul said, in my flesh dwells no good thing. Look at your neighbor and say, you no good thing, you. <laughs> say, I'm, say, I'm talking to your flesh. I'm talking to your, don't get mad at me. I'm talking to your flesh. You old no good thing, you. Some of y'all did some old no good thing on your way to church. Some of y'all cussed some folks out on your way to church. You no good thing. We're talking about your flesh. Because your spirit man is renewed like Jesus. Look at Hebrews 12, 9. If you dare say man. Furthermore. We have human father, flesh fathers, who corrected us, and we paid them what? We paid them what? Should we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of what? He's the father of what? Spirits and lives. He's the father of spirit. Family, everybody, who do you think he's talking to? Who do who you think he's talking about? He's talking about us. He's talking about you. Amen, amen. John chapter number 6. John chapter number 6, verse 6 to 3. John 6, 6 to 3. So you got to know as a spirit being, when you open your mouth, things are happening. I was on the plane the other day, on the plane the other day. And God always given me teaching uh, tools. And I always sit in the exit aisle because the exit aisle has the room for me for my space. It's my first class right now until I'm able to afford uh, Delta first class. <laughs> Pray the Lord. And then I would rather pay round trip 170 bucks than to pay 500. They're going to they're take the same amount of time. But, but pray for me. Watch this here, fam. I'm sitting in the exile, so they got two exit rows. And then I already know before the plane take off, the steward, she's going to give a presentation about us sitting in the exit row, how we got to be able to assist in case something happened. I already played, prayed about the, the plane, blood of Jesus around it. So <clears throat> the other day, she looks at a lady. She looks at a guy. She said, I need a yes from all of you guys. So she looked at the first person. They said, yes. 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 And they looked at the next person. They linked. Yes. They look. Then he looked at the guy. He said, she said, no, sir. I need a verbal confirmation. Wow. You got to open your mouth. I looked at this. Mm, I, saw, I wrote a whole lesson on that thing. <laughs> She said, you can't nod your head. I need a verba. See, when me and my wife got married, I were, when I married other people, I stood up there and said, you take this man to be your wife. You can't say, uh-uh, baby, open your mouth. I need for you to say yes or some. <laughs> yes or no. Say some. <laughs> See, why? Nothing happened until you speak. Till you speak. Oh, y'all getting this thing. <laughs> you got to say something. You got this. You can't go up there talking about. Because <laughs> then soon as something happens to my pastor, I ain't say that. I just did it. Did. Like, what that mean? Pray for me. No. She said, no, sir. I have to have a verb of comfort. I looked at her and said, mm, girl, you preaching up in here. I'm about to give you an offering. Where my, where my, my, you better be glad my bag is up there. I can't get to it. Amen, family. Now watch this here, family. It is the spirit who gives light. The flesh prophets what? Nothing. The flesh prophets what? Nothing. The words that I speak, the words that you speak, they are spirit and they are 
Drop down what Peter said. Drop down what Peter said. Verse 68. Look at verse 68. Come on, family. Come on, stream it live. Stay with me. We got 18 minutes. 18 minutes. But Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, whom shall we go? You have the words of... Baby, when you open your mouth, you are, it, all words are eternal. They, whether, whether or not they're going to be eternal truth or eternal life. He said, Jesus, the word that you speak to are eternal life. You got to know of the spirit being, when you open your mouth, you are speaking eternal. So what are you saying over your children? What are you speaking over your life? What are you speaking over your finances? Girl, we, come on, let's go, let's go look at one of these gated communities because we can never live up in here. For real, dog? We can never drive a car like that. We can never go on a vacation like that. Do you see people say, well, I, say, I told my wife, we can never afford. I know it. I know it. I know you can. I, I know you can. Hey, Amen. I know you can. Because you said it. And you're going to have what you said. I just like, what's the man named who wrote Money Coming? Leroy Thompson. Was in the grocery store. And then a lady in front of him said, man, as quick as you get this money, it goes. He said, I know that's right. And God said, what you saying? He said, uh-uh. He said, say money coming. That man that made so many millions off that book, money coming. Somebody say money coming. Money coming. To, me, to me, now. now. From, the From the north, the north, south, the, south, the, east, the east, the west. west. Good, money. Good money. Stacked up. Stacked up. Running, over. Running over. It's headed my way. Headed my way. Now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Money coming, baby. Amen. God told us, quit saying what the world is saying. Because all of us said it, man, as soon as I get this money, it goes. God said, uh, money coming. You got that. I'm going to show you in a, in a few minutes how you, the, the angels are listening for your words. Amen. They listening for your word. They listen. They, they, they eavesdrop. What, what do you say? And it's also demons are listening for your words. Somebody is listening. So give them something to do. Proverbs 18, 21. Proverbs, we know this one, but the word is supernatural. Proverbs 18, 21. Come on, family. When you speak, things start to happen. <coughs> Proverbs 18, 21. I believe this stuff, man. I'm living this. Amen. You better, you, you better believe it. You don't, it's going to come to pass anyway. I, I, I knew you were going to leave. I, told, I knew you were going to leave. I told my sister three years ago that you was going to leave. Prophecy come to pass. <laughs> Prophecy come to pass. Go ahead and prophesy, sis. Uh-huh. Every time you open your mouth, you are prophesying. Or you prophesy. 1821, if you dare say amen. Death, life, are in the power of the... And those that love it, we're going to do what, family? Hebrews chapter number 11. God formed the world with the words of his mouth. Everything you see was made by words. Somebody say everything. Everything, everything you see was made by words. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 11. Words are spiritual vehicles that brought the earth to pass. James, well, Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 3. If you dare say man. Watch this here. By faith. By what? Faith. Everybody look at me, family. You got to do this by faith. It's crazy. You got $5.73 in the bank, and you're saying, I'm, you know, one day I'm going to be a millionaire. One day I'm going to be a billionaire. One day I'm going to pay folks houses. Or one day I'm going to send people to college. One day I'm going to this. One day, and everything in your life is totally opposite of what you believe in. You got to do it by faith. You got to do it by faith. Let them laugh. Say what God said. Let them laugh. Like the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, it's going to be more food. You're going to be able to pay pennies for it. It's a guy standing right there on the king's right arm saying, man, how that's going to happen? That'll never happen. He said, you're going to see it, but you won't eat it. You won't have a chance to eat. The Bible said when them four lepers was on their way to the enemy's camp, the enemies heard them and God magnified their footsteps and they thought <coughs> the king of Israel had hired other armies and they got out of there and left. Somebody say everything. everything. 
everything. Next thing you know, they went back and told the king, and the king sent some folks out. He said, king, it's true. They left everything. The Bible said the man who was the right hand of the king, they trampled over him and killed him. Elijah said, you're going to see it. He said, you're going to hear about it, but you won't eat of it. See, you're going to have what you say. The same thing with Pharaoh. Frogs everywhere. And Moses said, let you know that God is real. When you want these frogs to leave? He said, tomorrow. <laughs> How many of y'all would have said tomorrow? What y'all would have said? Yeah. Now. He said, Mark, he said, according to your word, they're going to leave tomorrow. You're going to have what you say. Words are spirit. Words have life. You're creating your own life. You, look, look at your life right now. You, you have what you say. Amen. Look what it says right here. 11.3. 11, what's it? By faith we understand that the world, that word world really, really means eons, the time, was framed by the, was framed by the, word of God. so your life are framed by your word. So the things which are what? Seen. The things which are seen were not made of things which are what? Look what it said. So the things which are seen were not made of things which are built. He said that the invisible, the unseen, which is the word, made the seen. Yes. Your words got power, man. You're going to have what you say. I'm going to have what I say. Amen. Amen. Go to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Things are affected in the spirit world by faith filled words. Psalms 103. Psalms 103, verse number 20. Psalms 103. Angels are dispatched by your words. Psalms 103, when you give voice to the word of God, angels get their order. Don't nothing move until you say something. You hear what I just said? Don't nothing move until you. So angels are dispatched by your words. When you give voice to God's word, angels, which are messenger, they get their orders. Amen. Let me, let me ask you a question. For you. Let's, let's just talk. Let's just talk. Everybody look at me. You got 11 minutes. Everybody look at me. Waitress come to the table. A waiter come to the table. They come to the table. What's the main reason why they come to the table? To take your what? To take your order. Right? What if you don't ever say something? What if they bring you, watch it, what if they bring you a ribeye steak to the table and you ain't ordered? What's the first thing you're going to say? Huh? I ain't ordered it. And what's the second thing you're going to say? I ain't going to pay for it. <laughs> see, see, as it is in the natural, see it out of the spirit? You have in your life what you have ordered. Quit paying for stuff you ain't ordered. See, when they come to the table, me and my family, we're going to go out, we're going to eat today. And the first thing they're going to say, can I help you, sir? May I have your order? order? See, and I'm going to tell them, say, okay, I like this, this, so-and-so, and she's going to bring me my order. I like this medium well, I like this so-and-so, so-and-so. So when she brings the check, I give her the card. Why? Because she gave me what I order. Your words is how you order things. If I don't say nothing, I don't get nothing. If she come there and look at me, Come here, man of God. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. You the, you the waiter. Come on, come on, carry it. Come on, come on. You the carry. Okay, come on, come on. Okay, come here. Okay, act like you're taking my order. Put your Bible down like you're taking my order. Now ask me what I want. Sir, what would you like today? Oh, sign language? Can see, you? see, what's it? He can't read my mind. Can't read your mind. See, mm -hmm. and I tell him, sir, I want a double cheeseburger. Okay. With an order of fries. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. See, see, look here. But if I sit there and go, don't you know what I want? What is wrong with you, you crazy waiter? Your neck ain't moving enough. Move your neck. See there? Thank you, bro. <laughs> see? You see that? You see that? See, but watch this here. Watch this here. Watch this here. See, angels get their orders when you say something. When you say something, they start moving. See, if you ain't, if you ain't saying nothing, they don't move. Because you got two camps. You got God's camp and you got the devil camp. And if you're saying God's word, then the angels are getting their order. Because you are, sp let me tell you something, man of God told me years ago, and I believe him, Colleen. He said, Terry, do you know the angels don't know no difference between you and God when you speak? I said, what you say? 
He said, you're saying God's word. And because of Jesus, see, the only reason we're not, we're not consumed because of the blood of Jesus. He said, when you speak, watch Monica, he said, they, they think they're hearing God. I said, what? He said, yeah, that's why they move. I'm going to show it. I better hurry. But I'm a... <laughs> he said, when you speak, they don't know the difference. Because you see, the word of God is supernatural. When you speak his word, he said, they got to move. Okay, okay, let me, let me back it up right quick. Let me back it up. Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse number 20. If you're there, say amen. amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, you who are angels. Bless the Lord, you who is angels, who excel in what? Who do his what? Word. Heeding or listening to the voice of his what? Word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts, you ministers of his who do his what? Word. Somebody get me that in the CEB translation, the common English translation, the CEB. Find that. I want you to see this here. Bob, do we have a microphone or something? They can speak it to my microphone. Don't worry about it. They can speak it to my microphone. The CEB. Because I want them to believe. You, who got the CEB? All these. You have it, Matt. Come here, Matt. Stand up. Come on, come on, come on. That's my baby girl right here. Let me see. The CB, verse 20, Matt. You see it? Mm -hmm. Speak it to my microphone. Hold on one okay. second. Oh, okay. Read that thing, Matt. Slow down. You divine messengers. You, they are what? Divine messengers. See, they ain't human messengers. They are what? Divine messengers. And we are spirit beings. You divine messengers. Come on. Bless the Lord. You who are mighty in power and keep his word. And keep his what? Word. That's why every time you say something lining with the word, they ain't, they ain't thinking about you. They ain't moving. They only move by the word of God. Who obey everything he says. What? Obey what? Everything he says. Is there anything else? Bless him. Who obey everything he says. Don't you know when you say something, is God saying it? Why? Because, watch, watch this here, Fanny. Watch this here. Okay. Thank you, baby girl. Uh, I'm gonna, I don't want to get to the B part there. Go to, where are we going, Holy Spirit? Where are we, da, 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 da. Go to 2 Corinthians. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. I'm going to give you some. So when you get to the end, your life messed up, you better look in the mirror and say, it's my fault. <laughs> no, because you got people, they, they blame everybody. A second Corinthians chapter number five, verse 17. Come on, family. Come on, come on, come on. They blame everybody. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't need to come to a church like this here, because you're going to get the truth. And the truth is going to do what? Make you set you, make you free, baby. I want to know the truth. Anybody else want to know the truth? Look what he said in about his 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Behold, all things of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that's going to tell you, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and imputing, not imputing or crediting the trespass to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are what? We are what? Everybody look at me. Somebody tell me, what does an ambassador do, uh, do for a country? He speaks on their behalf. That's why when I say something, he told me, he said, Terry, when you say something, the man don't know the difference between you and God. He said, they're going to move when you. I said, what? Let me give them something to do then. <laughs> I'm an ambassador. That word ambassador means I'm a representative. That's why Jesus said, the same thing I did, you can do. The problem is I believe in him. He said, you are an ambassador for Christ <coughs> as though, watch him, as God was pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be what, family? Now, we are ambassador for Christ as though God was pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf. Family, let me tell you something. God is speaking through you, speaking through me. Amen. Amen. So when we hear, when we see here, go to Daniel chapter number 10. Amen. Daniel chapter number what? Hmm, you spirit being. I'm on, you're gonna have what you say. And we still have been listening to this stuff for a year and still saying the same thing. Same thing. Come on, family. What's the, what's the definition of stupidity? Continue to say the same thing and expect a, a different result. Come on, family. Daniel chapter number Ezekiel. Come on, Ezekiel. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Lamentation, Ezekiel, Daniel. 
Come on, family, watch this here. Daniel chapter number 10. If you dare say amen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know when I open my mouth, something's happening. It just, watch, everybody look at me, family. It's just taking longer than I anticipated. But I know it's headed my way. I know, I know I'm in southern territory. I know, he said, first the blade, first, then, after, when. I know I'm in the middle of territory. I know this preacher is. Amen. My last step is, the Bible said, when the fruit is ripened, immediately he put forth the sickle. I know I'm in a day, this thing can be cut. Look what it says right here, family. Daniel chapter number, let's pick it up uh, uh, in verse 10. Daniel 10, 10, if you dare say amen. He says, suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hand. And he said to me, oh, Daniel, man, greatly beloved, understand the word that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. He's going to tell us why he was sent to him. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. And he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for, the, for from the what, what day? Come on, family, from the what day? The first day that you set your heart to understand, to humble yourself before your God, your words was what? Your words was what? Because I have come because of your I'm here because of your words. That's why I'm here. They get they, they get they, they assignment, they get their direction from, he said, the only reason I'm here, I come for your word. See, I, te I, tell, you, I tell you another story, Holy Spirit. We're going to go there. We're going to go there. Go to Luke chapter number one. Go to Luke chapter number one. I'm going to show you something. I'm here because of your words. So when some show up, don't, don't be acting all crazy. No, you prophesied that. Amen. You prophesied that, that as soon as he grew up, he's going to go to jail. You prophesied they're going to graduate from college. You prophesied they're going to be millionaires, billionaires. You prophesied, amen, because I have what I say. You're going to have what God say. You're going to have what you say. The only reason you're going to have what God say if you say what God said. Look at uh, 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 verse 13. I'm in Luke chapter number 1. Let's pick it up uh, uh, in verse let me, let me see. Let's pick it up at verse 11. I'm in Luke 1, 11. Y'all ready? Then an angel, we know the message, of the Lord appeared to him, the same angel that appeared to Daniel, appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of the incense. And when Zechariah saw it, he was troubled and fear fed upon him. And the angel said to him, the messenger said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. For your prayers is, when was his prayer heard? When was his prayer heard? The first day. Come on, family. He said, I'm here because of your, that's the only reason I'm here. I'm here because of your prayer. I'm here because, he said, your prayers heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear your son and you should call his name what? But watch this here, family. Look at verse 18. And Zechariah said to the angel, how should I know this? If I'm an old man, my wife is old, advancing year. And the angel said to him, I'm Gabriel, who stand in the presence of God, was sent to speak to you and bring you this glad tide. And you become mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my, which will be fulfilled, which will be fulfilled in their own what? Now, everybody look at me. Why did the angel come to Zechariah? Because he what? I'm here because of your words. And then he, now all of a sudden he don't believe. <laughs> you hear that lesson? I'm here because you, D Daniel, the only reason I'm here, I was sitting here because of your words. The only reason I'm here. That's why when they knock on the door, I'm, I'm asking them, what's up, what's up? Are, are, are you the one? Because I know some, some supposed to be showing up right now. Angels, watch it, when you give voice, to God's word, angels, messengers, they get there, they're the waiters. Oh, that's good. They are the waiters in the unseen realm, like the waiters and the waiters in the natural realm. They're here to take your order, baby. Amen. When we make confession, things are happening because we are spirit beings speaking faith, feel what? Speaking faith, feel what? Lord, my time is up. I'm going to pick it up next week. No, I'm, I'm back next week. <laughs> next week, we're going to talk about John. We're going to talk about Jesus. 
I'm going to show you right here. Some is showing up. Some, some can knock on the door for you today because of your word. I remember, I remember. Close your Bible. I'll give you a quick testimony. I remember when I was a single man. I was a single man 26 years ago. My first wife, I got married, my first wife, I think I got married in, in 1984. First married, uh, my wife committed suicide. Committed suicide. I was a young man, foolish. I didn't know she was in the church. Oh, I know a lot of folks in the church don't believe. Don't you ever take your life for a man. Because I wasn't born again and I didn't have a clue. She committed suicide. And I remember a year after she committed suicide, watch this here. I, I wasn't even born again, Faithlene, but I just said, I said, I'm ready to be married now. Now, many days later, I met Linda. I, I put my words out there. And then next time I put my words out there, me and some partners was going to play basketball. We passed her. They said, did you see that pretty woman you passed? I said, where? They said, right there. They said, do you think you can get her number? Not only I can get her number, I'm going to marry her and give her a cup of kids. And... <laughs> Way about them, Linda. <laughs> Bonnie, I didn't even know. All I said was, I'm ready to be married. I put my words out there, Colleen, and a few months later, I didn't even see her. They saw her, and they gave me a challenge. I didn't know the challenge was going to be my wife. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the spend of all my money and <laughs> family. It works whether you know it or not. I, I'm careful what I say. I don't just say anything. If I say something, I would meditate on that thing. What did he tell Joshua? Joshua, meditate on his word day and night. Amen. Be careful to do according to all that is written there in. Then you're going to make your way prosper. You're going to have good success. Why? Because you're going to have what you say. Y'all got it? Amen. Give the Lord a hand praise. Mm-hmm.